Picture this. Rome, the capital of an empire stretching from Britain's blustery shores to the sun-drenched sands of North Africa. It was a concrete jungle, but with way better statues. Forget your glass and steel skyscrapers, we're talking marble temples, colossal amphitheaters, and enough gold to make a rapper blush. This wasn't just a city, it was a statement, a swaggering testament to Roman power, boasting a population bigger than any city for centuries to come. The streets, a chaotic symphony of commerce, diplomacy, and the occasional chariot traffic jam. Think New York City, but with togas instead of suits and gladiatorial combat instead of baseball. At the heart of it all? The Senate, Rome's political engine. This wasn't your typical stuffy government meeting. Imagine a reality show with more backstabbing than an episode of Survivor, starring toga-clad politicians with ambitions sharper than a centurion's gladius. The stakes, power, glory, and the fate of the known world. But beyond the political maneuvering and the military might, there was a vibrancy to Roman life. Citizens, both free and enslaved, crammed into bustling markets gossiping over olives and wine. They cheered for their favorite gladiators, debated the latest philosophical trends, usually in between chariot races, and lived lives as diverse and dramatic as any play in their beloved Colosseum. Rome wasn't built in a day. It took centuries of grit, determination, and a healthy dose of military conquest. From humble beginnings as a small Italian village, it rose to prominence through strategic alliances, cunning diplomacy, read well-timed betrayals, and an almost insatiable appetite for expansion. Enter the big league's Julius Caesar, a name synonymous with ambition. This military genius and master strategist conquered Gaul, modern-day France for those not up on their ancient geography, adding a significant chunk of land and wealth to Rome's portfolio. Caesar, with his piercing gaze and penchant for laurel wreaths, was like the rock star of Roman politics. He knew how to work a crowd, conquer a nation, and still find time to write a best-selling war memoir. What a guy. Then came Augustus, Caesar's adopted son, who picked up the imperial baton and ran with it. He officially transitioned Rome from a republic to an empire, ushering in a golden age of peace and prosperity known as the Pax Romana. Think of it as Rome 2.0, same ambition, sleeker interface. It was during this period that Rome truly flourished, its influence felt from the marble columns of its grand structures to the very laws that governed its citizens. But let's not forget the little people. While emperors were busy conquering and senators were, well, being senators, everyday Romans were living their lives. They were bakers, blacksmiths, teachers, and shopkeepers. They fell in love, raised families, and gossiped about their neighbors, probably about who had the best olive oil. It was their resilience, their spirit, that truly made Rome the eternal city. What goes up, must come down, even empires. The same ambition that fueled Rome's rise eventually contributed to its decline. The endless expansion? Not so sustainable in the long run. It's like ordering too much takeout. Eventually you're left with a bloated empire and a bad case of indigestion. Internal strife that old chestnut also played its part. Imagine the drama of a reality TV show, but with real swords and togas. Political assassinations, rampant corruption and power struggles that would make even the most ambitious senator sweat. Let's just say, Game of Thrones had nothing on ancient Roman politics. Then there were the barbarians, those rough and tumble tribes from beyond the empire's borders. Initially dismissed as uncivilized, they didn't even have indoor plumbing, these groups proved to be a thorn in Rome's side. Think of it as the ancient world's version of a network outage. Inconvenient, disruptive, and ultimately leading to a whole lot of chaos. And let's not forget the economy. Remember all that gold and marble? It was great for building monuments and throwing lavish banquets, but not so great for long-term economic stability. Inflation soared, trade routes were disrupted, and suddenly those once valuable Roman coins were worth about as much as a denarius in a ditch. The Roman Empire might be ancient history, but its legacy, very much alive and kicking, ever walked into a courthouse and felt intimidated by those massive columns? You've got the Romans to thank for that. Their architectural grandeur still echoes in our government buildings, stadiums, and even our bathrooms. Hello, indoor plumbing. And what about our love for a good republic, in theory at least? Yep, that's Roman too. Their system of governance, with its emphasis on checks and balances, though they could have used a few more checks on that emperor situation, laid the groundwork for many modern democracies. 
Though let's be real, those toga-clad senators probably never had to deal with filibusters or campaign finance scandals. Even our language bears the mark of the Roman Empire. From Latin phrases sprinkled into everyday conversation, veni, vidi, vici, anyone, to the very structure of Romance languages like French, Spanish, and Italian, the Roman Empire's linguistic footprint is undeniable. It's like the Roman Empire left its phone at our place and we've just been using it ever since. Sure, the Romans might not have invented the internet or perfected the art of the perfect pizza crust, but they left their mark on the world in ways that still resonate today. So the next time you're stuck in traffic staring at a statue of some toga-clad figure, take a moment to appreciate the enduring legacy of the Roman Empire. Just try not to think about the traffic jams those chariots must have caused.